How's it going guys? Welcome back to Automatic Transmission, the channel for automatic transmission. Uh, today we're, we're going to be working on a 68 RFE. We're going to do a teardown inspection and uh, we're going to do a, a full rebuild on this thing. I, I, don't know, I don't know exactly what's going on with it, what's wrong with it. We're going to tear down and see what's going on. But we got the basic parts for, uh, to get, get us started with. I got a uh, overhaul kit with all the frictions, both filters, solenoid pack, and a shift kit, and a uh, line pressure sensor. This is just the basic stuff that you would need for uh, to re you know to rebuild your 68 RFE. We don't know exactly what's wrong with it. We're gonna tear down and uh, see if we're gonna need any more parts. What I don't have yet is the bushing kit. It's coming. Uh, and it is, it is very recommended to install a bushing kit on all the 68 RFEs. I know it's kind of pricey, the bushing kit itself, but it is needed and recommended. 68 RFEs, uh, the problem that we're seeing a lot is when they put a uh, programmer on it or they boost uh, uh, power or increase power in the engine, 60 R 68 RFEs don't live that long and they have that issue. 48 RFEs are good. I mean, they can withstand more, more horsepower than the 68s. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this unit, but we will find out and we will try to correct some minor issues that this 68 RFE has. Uh, I know there's an updated uh, Sonics input drum for high performance applications, but in this case, we're not going to do that. We're not going to install that, that uh, high performance drum. All right, guys, well, uh, let's get started, and I'll put the camera over there uh, where, the, where the transmission is at, and we'll tear it down. All right, guys, well, come on, follow me. All right, guys, well, let's go ahead and uh, start uh, digging into this uh, 68 RFE unit, and as always, the first thing that you need to remove is the external components. Well, the linkage is loose. Linkage arm, it was already loose, but we're gonna take the uh, extension housing off, input speed sensor and output speed sensor, and that's everything that he has. It only has one big plug for the solenoid pack. Uh, that's, it, that's it externally. And then in the front, we have this big uh, hubcap, uh, pump cover, and uh, line pressure sensor. Cooler line uh, fittings there. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, start digging in. 15 inch, 15 millimeter pocket. Removing the extension house. Yep, some of them are a little bit tight. I'm gonna try and not use a compressor today to keep the noise level down, but I mean, if I need my uh, half inch uh, drive, let's see, I'll get the other battery operated one. Hold that thought right there. We'll get it out. There we go. All right. A little bit too big for this. The extension housing, the pan gasket, I mean the pan, uh, don't usually take a pan gasket. They uh, come from the factory with silicone and uh, I mean we use uh, silicone that, that we get it at the transmission parts place. It's not just any regular silicone. Uh, before on the 604s back in the days, I'm talking about back in the 90s, you have the uh, ATF plus four when it, when it first came out. And since those transmissions as well, uh, they have uh, 
I mean, they don't take gaskets. They come in some kits, the gaskets, don't get me wrong, but they don't take a gasket, you use silicone. Back then when you use the, the wrong silicone of those units, it will start, the fluid will start foaming. It will start foaming, it, it had like a chemical reaction. So it had, to, it had to be a specific silicone for it. There's two notches for you to uh, get your screwdriver. It's on one side, on both sides, one right here and one on the other side. You know, like when you disassemble transfer cases as well, they have this two little two notches where you get your screwdriver in there. And, uh, you know, so that you can pry it open because the silicone, once it sets, I mean, it, it, it does, it's like a glue, you know. Extension housing. Uh, let's get it out of the way. The fluid don't look too bad. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, I've seen it where the fluid looks like this, and because it takes a lot of fluid, I've seen it where the uh, overdrive frictions. This is the first. This, this is the first thing that goes on this thing. The overdrive frictions. I mean, there would be smoke. You will still have overdrive. I mean, the overdrives will still apply, but on heavy acceleration, uh, you will, I mean, it'll, it'll slip. It would slip. All right. So we got the extension housing off. We got the parking gear out. The reason we, we want to get the parking gear off is when you're trying to get this, uh, the planet and the output shaft out, it's not interfering here. You know, because this is a reverse drum. You got the reverse drum, you got a snap ring. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so they're using, usually they're eight millimeters, but it's been built before, as you see. This is a uh, uh, aluminum co uh, color paint, and the extension housing was machinery gray paint. I'm not sure how many times, times has this been worked on before, but, we're gonna fix it. And hopefully for good. Now, let's remove the pump cover or the snap ring for the pump cover because we're gonna have to push it from the inside. Sometimes if you get a screwdriver and, and pull it, it'll come out. But more than likely, it won't. All right, let's go ahead and flip this thing over. Sixty-eight RFE. Okay, we got a few tens. We got one ten here, another ten here. They're mismatched bolts. It takes a, uh, and it's missing one. Yeah, I'm recording. For some reason, I thought I didn't press the record button, but I did. That's good. All right, so it's missing one pan bolt. As you can see, it's got a pan gasket. It smells a little weird. Got some foam right here. A little bit of foam. And with the flood that we had not too long ago, it might have been flooded and serviced. Oh, cooler line clip on the magnet. It was probably serviced and it didn't live. That's a problem when you get uh, when you get uh, water in your transmission. They'll live about a month. Depends on how long you drive it. If you drive it for a week or two, I mean, maybe you don't live that long, but if you service it right away, it'll give you a couple months of life. But it is common. I mean, once, once you get one of these things, or any transmission for that matter, flooded, that's it. 
immediately change the fluid, remove the return cooler line, and start pouring fluid in until clean fluid starts coming out. You may have a 50-50 chance of saving it. Just tend it like it is. I mean, I know that a lot of you guys might be like, man, I flooded mine, and then, I mean, it lived for a year. I mean, that's good news, but they not all live. Just let you know. We got 68 RFE written down. So this might, must have been a used solenoid pack they installed on this unit. Like I said, I mean, you can see that it's been worked on before. So once you see markings like this, you know that it's a, it's a used part. We got a brand new one. And that's the thing with these things, you know, 68 RFE, the bad track record that they have is, is best just to, you know, fix them right the first time. There we go. Big old hubcap, old hot rod. I don't know if you remember those hubcaps from back in the day. Or that movie Cobra, the Sylvester Stallone, the hot rod that had those, those type of uh, hubcaps. As you can see, a difference from the 45 RFEs and the 545. Well, the 545 have that type of uh, front cover on it. But the regular 45 RFEs, they have a seal here and a snap ring. And then you have, of course, your front seal. And the 68 RFEs, you only have the, the big seal on the outside and just that one snap ring. I mean, there, there, there's some differences. And there's some differences internally as well. A big, big difference. This should just come out. All right, let's go this way. Come here, Pilgrim. There you go. All right. Let's go ahead and inspect our pump. Let me get a T30 socket. Torx 30. Let's go and see what this thing looks like. I can see some water. Yeah, it's got rain water probably I don't know you see a little bit of a water droplets on the bench I can see some water droplets right there I don't know if you can tell yeah I guess my suspicions were right The shift kit that we got is just a normal, regular shift kit, you know. But there is an HD2 shift kit that you can install in one of these things, and it kind of makes it a little better. I mean, the only difference is that it comes with springs for the accumulators. Some of you guys own a diesel with the. This is behind a 6.7 liter engine. So on the 5.9, you have uh, the, the 48RE. Which 48RE, that's a, that's a real good unit. I like those units. I'm not a Dodge man, but. The 48s are pretty good. They put those 48 RE's on the SRT tens. That's how good they are. Of course, a 45 RFE would not live behind a SRT ten. I don't think it would. 45 RFE is a smaller version of this. All right, so let's just uh, split the halves, halves open. 
yeah there's some water droplets in there uh, let's see I don't want to make a mess on the floor but I don't know if you can tell but there's some water droplets in there now if some of you guys are uh, turning wrenches and uh, you're working on flooded vehicles like the floods that we had you know if you're in Florida Texas that uh, the flood waters remain for uh, for at least a week and there were some black waters in it we're gonna need a pump for this thing there is a flesh eating bacteria so you guys will know that you got to wear gloves and you got to wear safety glasses and make sure you don't have any cuts if you have some cuts put some tape on it and then wear some gloves because if you get some of that bacteria infecting you I mean we already had a couple well one death that we know of that came out of the news in the Houston area that he was a contractor he cut himself and a week later he passed away I mean that's how bad that bacteria is and uh, whenever uh, Katrina hit I think a few years you know uh, there was a firefighter that also perished because of that that flesh eating bacteria just like this uh, 45 RFEs I got I got a video on the 45 RFE tear down I think I don't remember if I have one in English but I do have one in Spanish in my Spanish channel and let's get this out of the way oh I was gonna show you uh, we're gonna need a pump See how uh, black that thing is? Well, not it's darkened and it's scratched on the inside. So he caught some metal. Let me show you the, pin, the little pinion. Let's see. Scratch right there. Let's see. Where you at? Yeah, right there. Let me get it closer. Right here. We're gonna need to replace this pump. So even though I already have uh, the overhaul kit, you know, little things like this, you, you have to uh, inspect very well. Look at all them droplets now. And I'm not even sweating on the bench. It's the water that he has in here. It's not a whole lot of water, but there is some water in here. And the fluid looks in real good shape. I mean, so it was flush pretty good. You know, whoever did the flush did a good job. Apparently, didn't took everything out, you know, because you need a, a few flushes. Even though the fluid looks good, you got to run it and then flush it again. So, this is where, this is hard, the uh, reverse clutches. I mean, they look in good shape, but on a flooded vehicle, you got, you has got to replace all the frictions. Reverse clutch hub. You can see right here where it looks like this lost reverse and it kind of scratched the plate a little bit and uh, you know with the 3M uh, buffer uh, or gasket remover you can still you know save this plate and you can see on the overdrive side they did the same thing and you can see that it's a little black so my suspicions are correct overdrive frictions are smoked all right let's get them out overdrive frictions This is normal on, on uh, when you add horsepower to these units. We had one that every single year we did it. We did it. Uh, we did it twice. 
We did it once. We worked perfect. We left a year later, about 13 months later, we came back with the overdrive friction burnt. We repaired it, delivered it. 12 or 13 or a little bit over a year, he came back again with the uh, friction burnt. On a situation like that, the way we fixed that front, and we haven't seen it since, and it's been over a year now, we had to uh, replace the uh, computer. And uh, we have to, you know, we program it with the factory uh, factory stuff on there. You know, and we took the tuner off. We took everything off. And uh, even though they ha he had like cat deletes and all that stuff, you know, it's out there on the road. So that was the fix for that. I mean, sometimes you will get the 68 RFEs that, I mean, you do, you do good to them. And... Uh, they come back and some customers they don't they don't want to take their their stuff off and I mean once the warranty period is over it's over you know I mean fair is fair and you know where the problems at you don't want to address the problem then I mean something has to be done all right so we know that our overdrive frictions are frictions are burn up And this is very typical. Every single, every single 68 RFE that I have done, it's always cooked on the overdrive. I mean, even on normal applications, but normal applications, uh, they do last quite a while. See some water droplets. Some water droplets on this bearing. All right, that was our input shaft. Oh, and you know, like on the 46 REs, you know, that they have a, a check ball in the cooler line that you're supposed to remove because if you don't remove it on the 46 REs and the 42 REs, if it gets blocked, you will cook your planets. Well, that one's inside the input shaft. There's a little snap ring there. You just make sure it's clean and clear. And you put the little O-ring on the, on the capsule and install it back on. All right, so here's our input or a O-Dry drum. And there is a Sonics upgrade for this. If you want to spend the money, you can go ahead and more, more than welcome to do it. If you want to spend the money. Now I see one issue right here already that I did not catch it until now. Look at all the water droplets. And this is water, this is not cooling, this is just water. See this snap ring right here, this opening? This is not a good idea because it won't let the valve body uh, seat right. You know, you, you have two ports here. You have uh, for the second clutch or intermediate clutch and the overdrive uh, clutch on, this, on the center support. And if the valve body doesn't seat right or seal right here, it's going to create a leak and you're going to have some issues. I mean, it's not all the way forward, but it looks like he, he might have cleared. Let me get the valve body so I can show you. quick here's the two seals right here and see the, the embossment areas right there you know where he's raised up I'm making a mess over here well if the if the snap ring is, is interfering the valve body is not gonna seat right and it's gonna try to push the snap ring in and I mean you're eventually probably warp the valve body you know so just pay attention to that once we uh, assemble this unit I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about and how to do it and it's a it's a very stiff snap ring so it's a little bit hard to get it on that place let's see here come on now all right this is a tapered snap ring The tapered snap ring, the taper goes towards the outside and the flat of the snap ring goes towards the center support. Let me see if I can get you the tip. If it'll, if it'll focus and you can see how tapered it is. 
see it's thicker on this side and then he bevels down he tapers down is that a good shot or not mm, well oh yeah you can see it better like that all right it's a taper snap ring now we're gonna get I just used some snapping pliers and just grab the whole assembly and pull it out. There's a bearing and there's a bearing space there. There's another bearing down here. The bushing kit for this is different than the 45s RFEs. It's a little bit more expensive, but I do recommend the bushing kit and install it complete. All of it. All of it, man. You can install all of it. All the bushings, man. See the uh, fourth clutch? They were slipping. Got molded pistons. I'll show you the kit right now. The molded pistons come in the kit. This snapping right here is just to uh, hold the center support in place actually this this snap ring is the base and it, the center support sits right here and then the taper snap ring holds it together all right so we have a planetary gear right here our front planet you can see it's a six pinion planet bearing we have our intermediate frictions or second clutch Look in good shape, but with water, you got to go in the trash. You do not want to reuse. It's tempting, like man, the thing looks brand new. Yeah, but if you have water on it, the lining is gonna fall off. These are trash. You cannot reuse those. Now, see the rear planet. I'm just gonna pull it pull it out that's the reason why we took the parking gear off in the beginning when we first started with this thing you know so you can just take this out parking gear goes right here and here's where the snap ring goes we have the reverse uh, drum in there and the low reverse brag let's go ahead and take this planet out it's very rare that I see this uh, this plant is damaged basically the holding elements the ones that get damaged you know the frictions we got a front planet six pinion the bearing goes here and the front planet goes here then you have the fourth clutch hub or that sun gear here we have another sun gear. Then we have a captured bearing. Another six pinion planet. And our ring gear. So that captured bearing does not come out. That stays there. If that bearing goes out, the whole output shaft needs to be replaced. All right. Okay. Now we're going to remove our uh, low reverse drum. It also has a taper snap ring, but it's a little bit thinner. Let me get a thin screwdriver right quick. Hold that thought. Don't go anywhere. Hey, where you going, man? All right. Let's see. A little thinner snapper to get in there. A little thinner screwdriver. And then we grab it. Oh. Come on now. Can you guys see in there? Well, it looks a little dark in there, but 
There we go. You get behind his nap ring, and you're ready to grab it. Gotta use your fingernails. You gotta pay attention. Like, like I mentioned a while ago, that flesh eating bacteria, make sure that if you have a little cut, put some tape on it and use some gloves. Put some super, super glue on the cut. You'll close, you'll close your, your wound. Wrap some tape around it. And wear some gloves. The reason I say, you know, like in this work environment, our hands are the ones that take, uh, uh, these are sharp edges everywhere. So our fingers are the ones that get cut. You know, sometimes you get poked with your pick and I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of ways you can get injured, but sometimes you don't even, I mean, I do get, you know, with the pick, it'll prick my finger. I just ignore it because you're, you're so used to getting, you know, little cuts and stuff like that, that you don't use your first aid kit or anything like that to try to fix it, you know. Those are the low reverse friction, they look in good shape. Now it depends on how, he, how you grab the low reverse sprag. Like if I'm grabbing it like this, right? It's turning counterclockwise, but don't be confused because if you hold it like this, it turns clockwise. So just make sure, this only goes in one way. So anyways, but anyways, mark it. So it's turning counterclockwise. If you want to, just uh, draw a little arrow on it with your pick, which I can't see it. And then I draw a little arrow there. It goes in this direction, but, or mark it with a marker. You know, like one of these paint pens. I mean, if you just want to be on the safe side, just mark it. Make sure it's nice and clean. In other words, it's gonna, the paint will fall off, but you get the idea. Market. All right, so we have tore down this uh, 68 RFE partially. Now we're gonna tear down the drum. And usually I do this on the press, but it will come out like this as well. It's just gonna pop a little bit up once you get the snap ring off. I'm doing it like this is because I don't want to move the camera you know reset the tripod over there on um, on the foot press you get the idea here we got the snap ring off so it does come off because the spring is not it's not a large spring if it was a large spring then that you have to kind of compress real good then you would now the pistons they're vulcanized pistons you know this is a steel part you know this is vulcanized rubber Whenever you get water in the transmission, you got to replace that too because the way it's, it's, it's bonded into the metal, it will debond as well. So even though it doesn't look like a lot of water was in here, but you can still see some drops, droplets. I mean, that's an indication that it was flush pretty good, but there was some residue here. And that little, I mean, those little drops right there that you, that you see on the bench, if if they're on the transmission, they will cause like shutters and chatters. You know, the friction lining will not will not uh, do its job properly. You know, friction lining is it's actually a brake. You know, like your brakes on your on your car for stopping. Oh, come on now, come on pliers. What's up with you today? Huh? They're not grabbing. Probably wore out. We'll grab another one. Uh, let's see here. Come on now. Where you at? Right. 
Uh, they're a little angled. These are too small. Let's see. Let's see. As long as I can grab it. This is a directional snap ring as well, so I'm not sure if it's upside down. These are angled, I'm not sure if they're going to grab. There's some fluid splashing on my face, but whenever the snap ring, that's why you need to wear safety goggles, safety glasses. Okay, let's try you again. Oh man, these are wore out. They don't catch nothing at all. There we go. Come here, pilgrim. I got one side up, so let's see. Watch that thing just pop back into this groove. Oh, come on now. Yep. Pop back into the groove. Ah, success. <laughs> All right. Now on this drum, I mean, I just apply a little bit of air right here and it separates both, but my compressor's off, so let's try in. Well, let me get this snap ring off first. Oh, this is a, this is a wavy snap ring. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is a wavy snap ring. And the one that goes on top, the wavy goes on the bottom, and the one that goes on top of the pressure plate is the flat snap ring. There we go. And this doesn't have any uh, lip seals or anything like that, you know. But this is where the where they seal one right here, one right here, two here on the inside, and then you have the molded uh, underdrive piston that goes there. And here you have a lip seal and an O-ring. Well, that's basically it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get everything cleaned up, and we'll get the. Uh, We'll get the uh, bushing kit in, replace all the bushings. Like I mentioned, uh, we have our overhaul kit from Precision. And if you need some parts, you can call my friends at Bay Area Transmission Parts. Their number is 281-332-4419. I'll probably put it on the screen. You can call them and uh, They'll hook you up. So here we have a precision overhaul kit. It comes with the uh, all the paper rubber rings and seals. This is what we call the, the bag, you know, the overhaul kit. Paper rubber rings and seals. And we have uh, all the molded pistons. All the molded pistons. I mean, this is just a precision kit, but you can you can get uh, Ray Bestus frictions or you can get Borg Warner, you know, factory type uh, frictions for your application depending on whatever you're working on you know so they these guys they do not sponsor me or anything like that I mean I'm just saying because they're good kits and I know I know Steve Garrett that works there he's an Atra guy and he actually works at Precision International you know he gave me a couple posters to post there but but yeah I mean if you need a overhaul kit or transmission parts just call my buddies at uh, Bay Area Transmission Supply, that's their name, 281-332-4419. Alright guys, well, I mean, this is a basic teardown. We're going to come back and, uh, oh yeah, we need the pump. 
We need to get a pump for it. I don't have the pump and I don't have the bushing kit. So I gotta get those two items. And once I get those two items, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get everything cleaned up, get it ready. I really don't wanna build this drum yet until I change. Well, I mean, well, let's go ahead and build it because the, the bushing is just right there. I mean, that's no big deal. When it's assembled, we can probably still, we can probably still change it. Well, I'd rather wait. I'll just wait. I'll just have everything cleaned up. And once I get the bushing kit together and the pump, I mean, we'll do the, the rebuild. And uh, it's a very simple unit. I mean, it's very easy to work on. He does have his issues and his flaws, but we're going to correct them. All right, guys. Well, my name is Hiram. Click like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.